Welcome. Um, I'm going to talk for about 20 minutes, and then I'm going to show you some uh, about 20 minutes of 3D content. So you can stand by with the glasses. This part is uh, not in 3D. Um, I really enjoyed the session this morning, what I call the futurist panel, which was the, uh, the youth panel. Um, but I'm here to uh, assure you that the future of TV is actually not the web. The future of TV is actually more TV. And, uh, <laughs> and it's bigger, and it's higher definition, and it goes on your wall, and it's web-enabled, and it's in 3D. And I know this because the last few years I've done a lot of traveling, a lot of speaking, and a lot of production, and worked with uh, all these crazy people like Jeffrey Katzenberg, who's been going around saying, you know, 3D is the future. And uh, three years ago it was a little bit crazy, and it's, it's become a lot less crazy since, uh, since December when my uh, publicist James Cameron put this film out. <laughs> and uh, so it's been very exciting for us. And uh, as mentioned earlier, we've done a lot of production in, in 2D, what I now call 2D, which is regular production. And in the last, uh, in 2004, we did a project for Toyota in Japan, which was a large screen launch event in digital 3D. And at the time, this was six years ago, uh, it was very, very bleeding edge. I still have the scars from trying to figure out how, how to do 3D. And um, we figured it out and uh, we sort of formed a group of people around the world that we all kind of go to. Many of them are in Los Angeles. We now have a group of people in Toronto where we, we're slowly getting 3D out there. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, where we've been and uh, where we're going. So I'm not sure if any of you have ever seen any of these films. These are films, the old school films. Um, I haven't seen very many of them. Um, I particularly like Lollipop Girls on, in Hard Candy. <laughs> I don't know if anyone ever saw that. I never heard of that one. This is not what we're going to talk about today. This is the old school. We're going to talk about films like these. Has anybody seen any of these films? Hopefully a couple of you have. Excellent. Hopefully you got out to see some concert films with your kids or, or, or otherwise, or some of the animated films. And uh, in the last year, there's been some incredible films in 3D, primarily coming out of Hollywood and the studios. So these are films that hopefully you've seen a couple of them, and you get a sense of what I'm going to talk about today. I'm not sure if anyone has heard of this film. Um, I won't say much about it other than uh, $2.3 billion worldwide. So I think any argument that uh, anyone's ever had with James Cameron, I think, I think he just lost it. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Avatar, but it's obviously been very well documented daily in the press and uh, probably at the Oscars as well. So I'm going to start off, tell you just some basics about what 3D is and, and why we do 3D and what exactly happens when you're watching 3D. So we are binocular creatures, meaning we have two eyes, humans, Many animals, most animals, most insects have two eyes. And we have two eyes so that we can see depth. If anyone doesn't have two eyes, you're not seeing any depth. Or if you have a wandering eye, you probably have a different depth perception when you're walking down the street. Certainly you would watching a 3D film. But we have two eyes. And what we do when an object comes closer to you is you tow your eyes in slightly to focus on it. And then when you're on the beach and you're looking at the horizon, your eyes are more parallel. What we do when we're shooting 3D is we replicate that. We replicate the, the left and right eye view um, in the same way that when you look around this room, you're seeing 3D with your eyes. If you have two eyes, you know the wall is closer, that wall is farther away, people are closer. You have these depth cues based on the fact that you have two eyes and you, your brain fuses these two images into a 3D image. If you close, your, close one eye, you'll get 2D. You won't be a very good outfielder on the baseball team if you close one eye, because you won't have a good sense of how fast the ball is coming towards you. Adult eyes are about two and a half inches apart. Children have eyes that are slightly smaller, sorry, closer together, about two inches. That's what we call the interocular distance. So when we, when we shoot 3D, we have two cameras. We shoot a left eye, we shoot a right eye. And then we project the two and what you see on the screen is two separate images. The glasses separate them, 
and then your, your brain fuses the two images to give you the depth in the same way as when you're walking down the street. So, so briefly, I won't give you the whole history of uh, film, but uh, 3D's been around as long as film has. As long as uh, still photography and motion pictures, people have been shooting 3D. They've been putting cameras together, shooting stills. There's a long history from the 1800s to the 1920s of 3D still photography. Obviously, in the 50s, there was a, there was a fairly significant um, bump up in Hollywood of, of uh, studio films. It was very exciting. They, they were afraid of, uh, of TV coming. They wanted 3D was going to be the future. So they took two cameras together, and they put them side by side, and they shot uh, 3D films on film. And there was a brief period, about three years, where about 50 films were made. Some of them OK, some of them good, some of them terrible, many of them completely terrible. Didn't really go anywhere for a number of reasons that I'll explain to you uh, in a few minutes. In the 80s, there was also a, a, a new revival of 3D with films like Jaws 3D that also uh, didn't really take off. It was still projected from film. It was in the 80s, it was a single strip of film, but it was still left and right eye on one strip. And because it was film, it was analog, wasn't really uh, something that could be successful. So in cinema, and I, and I don't take this lightly, but in cinema, there's really been three uh, monumental shifts in the way we tell stories. The first one, which you'll probably guess, is when we went from silent films to sound. This changed everything. And, and there were a lot of critics back then, so I've read, um, that said, how can you have sound? People will be talking over each other. You'll never be able to understand them. It's crazy. They were used to a pianist accompanying uh, the film. But when The Jazz Singer came out, it really was a monumental shift in uh, sync sound and the way stories were told in cinema. And as in the 20s and the rest of the century, cinema is still driving our entertainment. The next major shift was when we went to color. So there had been several other color incarnations, sepia and other things like that, but when we went to full color, uh, technicolor, with The Wizard of Oz, it was a huge moment. And when Dorothy says, we're not in Oz anymore, sorry, we're not in Kansas anymore, we're going to Oz, she goes from this essentially black and white, it was sepia, but essentially black and white world into the color world. And it's no coincidence, if you've seen Avatar, the line is in that film. James Cameron wrote, we are not in, the, the general says, we're not in, Can in, in Kansas anymore, we're going to Pandora. And clearly what he meant by that was, we are leaving the 2D world, we are going into 3D, and we are never going back, in the same way that we never went back to black and white unless you want to do it for creative reasons, but essentially, the industry never went back to black and white. So these films, which in the 50s, there were you know, some of them famous, some of them not so famous, some of them good, some of them bad, had several significant technological problems. They were shot on film with two cameras, so two film strips had to be processed and edited and projected from two separate projectors. They had to be lined up. The, uh, they had to be in sync. The, uh, the light bulbs had to be this, you know, roughly the same age, brightness. <clears throat> and what happened was they were distributed across North America primarily. And you know the projectionists, they were just you know in small towns. They didn't line them up properly. There's, there's talk of distributors would say, great, I have two prints. They send the left eye to the east coast, the right eye to the west coast. <laughs> Essentially, it was not uh, a good experience for, for uh, 3D. And films like Creature from the Black Lagoon were shown in anaglyph, the colored glasses, which is a terrible way to see 3D. So House of Wax, some of these you may have seen. Um, some of them, you know, there was exploitation films. Uh, and then in the 80s, they came back with it again, tried it again with film. This time, it was still shot left and right eye. Um, but there were different camera systems, and it would allow you to record left and right eye onto one uh, piece of film. So it was projected from one piece of film, but did not really take off just because of the analog nature of film and the, and the risk involved of it going out to uh, cinemas and not being projected properly. 